Hey everyone, welcome to Queerly Recommended, the podcast where we usually recommend queer films, books, TV shows, and more. I'm Tara Scott, and I review sapphic fiction, the lesbian review, and smart bitches trashy books. And I'm Chris Bryant, a contemporary romance writer for Bold Strokes Books. So Chris and I are actually not recommending anything today because this is a very special bonus episode where we are being joined by two awesome guests. They are some seriously impressive multi-hyphenates. I'm going to introduce the first one. Marisa Callen is the author of Between You and Me, a queer YA coming-of-age novel published by Bloomsbury, and it was selected for ALA's Rainbow Booklist. She's also the writer of the film A Million Happy Nows, which won the best feature at the first Clexicon conference ever. She's Mm -hmm. a trained actress, and she's been narrating audiobooks full-time for the past 12 years. And also, we have Lori Prince, who is a New York City-based actor and narrator with over 25 years of acting experience. She has an extensive theater background from off-Broadway to some of the country's top regional theaters, and you've probably seen her on TV. I have. (laughs) With over 150 audiobooks on Audible, she has become a go-to sapphic romance narrator with two earphone awards. And here's the other cool thing. They're married to each other. Yay! (laughs) Welcome, Marissa and Lori. (laughs) Hi, guys. We're so happy to be here with you. Yay. So... Before we dive into some questions, because we're going to be talking a bit about the Hollywood strikes, we want to give a real quick primer for some of the listeners who might not be familiar. So on May 2nd of this year, after six weeks of negotiating with the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, the Writers Guild of America voted to authorize a strike. Those contracts are negotiated every three years, and that's kind of how it went down this year. What does that actually mean? Well, Nobody's writing anything for TV or film while they're on strike. This hasn't happened since 2007, 2008, when the last writer strike happened. I don't know if you remember that period. TV got really weird for a little while as a result (laughs) of it. Uh, But we can expect a lot of unscripted TV coming out. TLDR on why they're striking is streaming has been very, very bad for writers. Pay has been suppressed so badly by just like all kinds of corporate fuckery. Most writers are not able to earn a living wage anymore. And there's also concern with things like, say, with ChatGPT, it's gotten so good at conversational language, that fuckery is going to go into like AI-based script writing. Most current writers, they'd be brought in to fix rather than create new things. Hmm. Where the strike became really, like, it was already historic, but like a whole other level of historic is that on June 14th of this year, SAG-AFTRA, which is the Actors Guild, also went on strike. For the first time since 1960, it's also the first double strike since 1960, which was the last time they went on strike. And I mean, that was such an important one because that's what got residuals added into contracts. So if you want to understand why is striking like this important, the impact is stuff like residuals. That's huge. But why are they striking? Same fuckery from the corporates all over again. You know, of the 160,000 SAG-AFTRA members, only 12.7% make enough money to be eligible for the union's health plan. The minimum dollar amount for that is a little over $26,000. That's really not very much. Streaming has totally borked those same residual payments that were so important for being able to make a living. And, you know, there's also concerns about things like likenesses being taken and then used over and over for backgrounds with AI. Because again, a problem, actors make a living off of background work. This is like the most basic of primers. That's as quickly as I could kind of go over the highlights. But if you want to know more, we're going to put resources in the show notes, including a podcast, just because I know some people prefer to listen and don't like to read. And that's okay. We want to make sure you're covered whichever way you like to take in information. So when we posted a clip from our recent episode announcing that we're not promoting struck work while the strikes are happening, Lori reached out and suggested, you know, let's have a conversation. I was like, holy shit, my favorite narrator wants to talk to me about anything? Um, <laughs> yes, we'll talk Aww. about whatever you want. <laughs> uh, so that's cool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, that was an amazing primer about what's happening. And just, just one mm-hmm. little thing. sag has been on strike before. It was just a different contract. Oh, okay. Um, Thank you. Yes. That was just something that I noticed. Oh, that's great. And and, uh, yes. And so the SAG-AFTRA created a website. It's called SAGAFTRAStrike.org. And you can find out so much information about what is happening and why we are striking. 
there's so uh, there is very little that they have agreed to <laughs> Mm -hmm. very very little and when you um, say they you mean the companies that are um the amptp yeah so when you go through they they uh sag has really laid it out very specifically um and very clearly saying we we asked for this and we <laughs> got this or we asked for this and it was rejected or we asked for this and we did get this thing and you can mm -hmm. so you can scroll through but it, it's um it's quite a lot actually but the main things the things that are being talked about are yes the residuals the health insurance premium, uh, what is c contributions and mm -hmm. AI. And AI is ridiculously scary. And not just for us. I, I mean, we went, okay, this is so off topic. Well, we went shopping the other day and we were in one of the stores. I don't know if I can say them. And it was mm -hmm. like, put your clothes in this basket. And when we were in the self checkout, which doesn't, is new for clothing stores. We put the stuff in the basket and in four seconds, it was, this is what's in there and this is how much it cost. I mean, it was like, ding. Oh, and I was like, no. I was like, what, what, what just happened? What was that? So, I mean, it's, it's, it is coming for so many labor jobs um, yes. that I, I, I think it can't help but change the, the landscape of where we, all of us are, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, and we're just at a point where if we don't strike against it now, then yes, you're going to be watching movies and listening to audiobooks that uh, are not done by humans. I mean, honestly, mm -hmm. I mean, that was one of the, the things that you, you touched upon um, a little bit was one of the things that they said about background actors is that mm -hmm. they wanted to pay them for one day, scan their likeness, and then be able to use them for the rest of the shoot yeah at, at, no that's awful yeah <laughs> it's disgusting that's just mm -hmm. that's just a no <laughs> yeah and they thought that was okay to propose it, to, even just the thought that that was okay to propose is astounding to me it's the yeah so i think going off of that like for me the, so the the thing we're going to link in the show notes and i sent it to you kind of in, in advance this when we were planning this out but it's um a conversation that adam conover he's part of the wga's negotiating team He's the creator of Adam Ruins Everything for folks who know what that is. But he went on the A More Civilized Age podcast, which if you're a Star Wars nerd and you're not listening to that, you should really listen to that. It's a great podcast. And they're trying to figure out because they're a Star Wars rewatch and they're doing not just the films, they're doing all the individual oh. episodes of all the TV shows. And they so can't. So there's like, right, right they can't. Yeah. So they had him on and it's a couple of hours, but... I think for me, the way he breaks down, he does talk about the actor stuff as well, but hearing what they want to do to writers' rooms mm -hmm. with streaming is so horrifying and so gross. And we've had some conversations, I think, in the literary community about, oh, well, I, what's going to happen with AI books? And it's like, I mean, I personally think AI books are going to fizzle because who wants to read a book by an AI? Like, you want to read art that's been created yes. by yes. a human. And so I... <sighs> hope we see that extend to other art forms but i mean we are seeing cover art that's being created by ai it's exactly what you're saying Lori. like it's coming for all of us i mean i work in tech and i think part of why i feel so strongly about the strike is i'm hoping it's going to lead to other tech workers instead of being so excited about ai and let's build it into everything saying like what are we doing you're gonna you're gonna build yourself out of a job is what you're going to do mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah my family uh -huh. likes to eat. So, so um, kind of based yeah. off of all that, we thought we could start the conversation around the strikes because I think there's a couple of, there are a few possible implications for audiobooks that could be quite interesting. And I mean, who better to talk to about this? So the first one is that sag After said that members can narrate audiobooks while they're striking. And I know like many narrators are in sag -Aftra, both of you are, but I saw at least one site with author advice that was saying like, there's no better time to get a celebrity narrator. And so I was wondering, what do you see that doing for the ability for folks like you who like, that's kind of your, that's part of part or all of your bread and butter, I suppose. I don't know that much about your finances, but I know you're both <laughs> regularly doing audiobooks. Like what? What is that availability 
of actors doing to people like you? Yeah, well, first off, audiobooks is under the purview of SAG-AFTRA. It's just a different contract. Mm, okay. um, not not all of them, but every publisher, correct me if I'm wrong, Marisa, but every publisher has a different contract with the union, correct? Yes, but all the primary publishers are signatories of the, yeah, that were all under a SAG-AFTRA right. contract. What do you feel about the celebs? I think if we're looking at AI as a tool to save money, Paying celebrities is the opposite of that, hmm. and they can charge much more for what we do. But it's it's the simple answer is it's not an easy job. There aren't shortcuts. You have to study the text. You have to make your choices about what the author wants, what the character should sound like. There's no quick way to do an audiobook properly, and I don't think it's the it, it's. There are there are celebrities who have always been doing them and doing them well. And there are celebrities who stepped into them during COVID because of that was a sort of another early version mm -hmm. of our of our industry changing completely. And I've lost jobs to celebrities, but they can't do all of them and they won't right. persist because it's actually very hard work. I do four or five days in a row from ten till five, speaking all day, have a weekend, and then do it all over again. I don't think that they'll sign up for that in a long-term way. And some of them do and are good at it, but I don't think it's going to put people out of jobs in their entirety. The bread and butter people will will keep, we're, we're efficient and we don't need babysitting. <laughs> so, uh -huh. I mean, yeah, and also to, they, yeah. they can demand a higher pay rate. So Yes. I mean, if we're talking about the publishers wanting to save money to use AI, that exactly like she said, that's the exact opposite. <laughs> right. So it might only like we might only see some super famous person who's not able to go out and film something right now do maybe like a publisher has decided, well, this is the book we were going to throw all our marketing budget at anyway. Yes. 100%. Exactly. Yes. Also very popular new titles and also older titles that they'll have they'll do a new production off with a celebrity narrator. Hmm. Sometimes oh, what will okay. happen is um, a book will be out, but then they'll make the movie of it. And so then there's interest in the audiobook. So then they'll redo the audiobook mm. with someone mm -hmm. like more well-known because they know okay. that there'll be more interest in it. Like that's just an example of yeah, where that might happen. Okay. Well, okay. That makes sense. So if we look at kind of on the flip side, like you were saying, if they're looking to save money, AI seems to be the path that some want to take. And that is a big part of why both the, the writers and the actors are striking, kind of, uh, as we discussed. And even last week, I mean, Laura, you, thank you so much for sending this article. I tend not to follow Washington Post because so much is behind paywalls. <laughs> um, <laughs> but they did have an article that came out, I think it was on the 16th, about how some narrators have sold their voices to Apple, which my first thought, of course, yeah. was, did they learn nothing from The Little right. Mermaid? We don't do that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's a bad choice. Oh. Um, what do you, what's your take, um, honestly, both of you on AI and narration? Yeah. Well, the article we saw, because I think, I saw it in five different places and friends were texting it to us. So mm -hmm. um, it, it AI is on everybody's, in our, in our industry's brain right now, specifically because when we found out, well, first of all, we kind of know everybody's voice. So we knew who they were uh, kind of immediately. Yeah. Um, and I, it, I'm not going to lie. It hurt. <laughs> Yeah, oh. it hurt. Like it kind of felt like a betrayal in a in a way, um, and also honestly, I mean, if you're gonna sell your soul to the devil, they did not do it for enough money. <laughs> well, really, are these? I'm not I gonna mean, ask you to out anybody, but are these no. people who are like close to retirement age? No, no, wow. that doesn't make sense. I know, and that's you know, it's interesting when when the subject was first brought up. I just was like, well. All right. I mean, but no, I was never felt that way. You were. I yeah. have very strong opinions about this, and I'm proud of my work, and I don't care mm -hmm. about the sound of my voice. I'm an actor, and I perform, so the sound of my voice has no value. What I do with my voice when I have feelings has value. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why I would put myself out of work by selling my vowel sounds when they have no meaning. 
Mm -hmm. Also, everyone's very worried about being replaced in this, but I don't think it's possible. Laurie does comedy. No computers have true timing. I do I do historical fiction, and I've played characters from fifteen to sixty in one book. Queens of Austria who reigned in Italy, so at some point during that, their accents will morph into something different. There's no there's no way that you can replace that kind of evolution of sound throughout a book with AI, because a human being is thinking about what that character's gone through. Mm-hmm. And you can definitely not replace emotion. So if somebody wants to listen to AI, I don't want to read them a book anyway, because right. they clearly, you know, that's the not that's not that's not what's important to them. So they can listen to a computer just render the vowels. But I don't think that'll happen. I think it's kind of like um, you know how they're the, on the dark web. They they steal books and they put them on the dark web. Yes. And I think people who are desperate and are not desperate if they want to like circumvent like paying people um to get free books on the dark web people will yes they will they will exactly listen to ai they you know because some people just like there aren't enough erotica there isn't enough sapphic erotica we want you know whatever and i feel like those are the people who when pushed and go to the dark web they will do something like this i think that they will step outside and say well let's give it a try you know it's like any sort of drug i think you know I, i hope it doesn't happen because it affects me too so I hope that they stick with people, go humans, you know, rather right. than AI, because uh, then we're as all at jobs. Yeah. As long as some people, well, I listen. Uh, we, when we met Chris, we bonded over her love of audiobooks. As you mm. know, she's an avid listener. Um, <laughs> she is an avid car trip. She's an avid road trip. To a road trip audio warrior, audio <laughs> listener. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> yes. She's so passionate about them sometimes. So I passionate. think it might have been the True. trip that, was she talking to you about the seven husbands of Evelyn yes, Hugo? Yes, she was. She bought, amazing. she bought the audiobook. For me, because she didn't want to wait until my library hold right. came oh, through. She was so passionate yeah, about that audiobook. Right. I, you know so what? I believe I it was that. one of her yeah. first. She it was. It on the drive first. to Provincetown <laughs> where we met at Women's Week. Yeah. And we sure. said we were narrators, and she was like, I just listened to one of those. <laughs> <laughs> what are they called? Yeah. It was. Oh, uh, wait. Was... I think I have some of my own books in that. <laughs> Oh my God, Chris Bryant, I've listened to your book. What the hell? You know, I just, it's, it's, it's a timing thing for sure. I have like ADD, of course, and I need to be, I have to be, you can, I can't escape. I have to be someplace where I cannot get out. So in a car, like that's the perfect time. (laughs) And it was Mm -hmm. funny because I was, I went to Texas uh, for something for, uh, I don't know, some festival. And it was like, it's an eight hour trip. And the audiobook I was listening to was eight hours and 23 minutes. So I sat in the car for 23 <laughs> minutes because I wanted to hear it. I mean, I could have taken Knowing it on you my would phone. never return to it. So I got you. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. So yeah. it works. It works. Yep. And I'm getting more and more into it. I promise I am. I really well, am. <laughs> uh, what I was going to say about it is that when I, I listen, a lot of narrators don't have time or they just don't do it. I listen to them. And when I do, I feel like I've shared in an experience with someone very specifically. I feel like I've been told a story by a person and the mm. author, obviously, but it's personal and it sounds personal. And I like mm-hmm. to think that I've experienced something with that narrator. So And voice voice will make or break an audiobook. I have right. People yes. have told me, yeah, hands right. down, like... Like, this person is great. I don't know why you use this narrator. I mean, it's like they are very passionate about audiobooks. So and they I'm listen hoping. They listen to audiobooks because of the narrator, not the author sometimes. Right. That's yes. true. They're like, oh, I love this person. You should, you know, always have her do your books. And yes. I'm like, Lori Prince, I can't afford her. Well, that's, I, I have done that with Probably some of the books you've narrated. <laughs> I have like some of your story. I have done that for sure. Cause I wasn't sure about the author. And I was like, but she's really great. And it's up for grabs for review. And then there's others like I've done that with, I don't know if she's still narrating, but I did that with Brittany Pope too. Cause I really, really liked her. Mm-hmm. Abby Creighton, of course, all the Savic readers, yeah. you know, they do we'll love fall Abby. over. They, yeah. they do. <laughs> but there's a few, which I won't name. Cause we're not, mm-hmm. we are not here to like nope. tear anybody not down, but nope. there are some <laughs> that, I had to stop listening to books from certain authors because they kept working with, because the same narrators kept being chosen and that just were not 
Cause I think also too, it's not, it's not even necessarily a quality thing. I think sometimes too, it's almost like it just hits or not for you. Like yeah, you can make a yeah, connection personal. or not. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I always joke that I often have um, some reviews that are like, why is this narr narrator yelling at me? <laughs> I, I because, point out that that's authentic. You know, there's, I them. don't have that. Kind of older, <laughs> oh yeah, you shush. <laughs> that, um, that older narration style, which kind of gets in a rhythm, mm -hmm. which you've probably heard, you know, if you listen to an older book, I just, I don't do that. Oh yeah, and, I know what you're and talking And I don't about. have no. like a pretty voice. <laughs> I don't have that either. So I'm yeah. going to tell you a story. And I'm yes. going to emote through it. <laughs> yes. I also think on the writer side, the minute somebody tells you you're going to get an audio book, you think that's it. I'm awesome. Like my book, they they love it so much. They want to put an audio and like we don't ha we have very little input on who actually gets our books. Sure. You yeah. know, every once in a while, it's like, hey, this person's going to do it. Or, hey, we had an issue with this. What do you think of the one of these three narrators? So it's, it's, it's not really like we get so excited because it's a push for us since there is such a push for audiobooks, And so we just get so excited. It's like, you know, it, and then you get somebody like some 90 year old woman, which good for her, but I mean, she's not a not quite 28 right. year old. Yeah. She's yeah. not a 28 year old yes. you know, lounge singer or something, you know, it doesn't work, but I um, understand that. It's, I know, but I, and I think, you know, it's just, I think, it, I think sometimes people approach it as, as a business thing. You know, it's yes. like, where's my, where's my budget? Who fits within this budget? Who can kind of sort of make this work? And maybe if yeah. this takes off, we can, you know, expand and do more. So it's, if for us, it's an honor to get an audio book, to get our books put in auto on any sort of audio form. It's, it's such an honor. And after that, we have no control, like right. past the, here's your contract. And it's like, it could mm -hmm. go to anybody. Sure. Mm. Yeah. That's, uh, that's really interesting to hear that you say that uh, I've been finding more and more lately that I'll get, are you available for this? Can we submit you a with pending author approval? Um, and <laughs> like I'm, I'm more I, I, no, no, I mean, no, no, first of all, no, but, um, yeah, more and more I find that's happening. And do you, do you get I, that as well? Are you like, it's changed a lot. I've done audiobooks almost full time for 12 years. There used to be mm. no author approval. We, I work for a lot of the, the big pubs, the big five, we call them. I mm -hmm. work for them and author approval has become almost standardized across the board. Wow. Or at least they have the ability. To, yeah, they usually will get sent auditions for a, a number of voices. And when you're talking about the big five pubs, you're talking about PRH, Macmillan, Hachette, Hachette Simon & Schuster, and Harper. Mm. Yeah. And they all mostly do that now. And they used not to. So it's becoming more oh. common in contracts, but they also have bigger budgets so they can either you negotiate your budget, you, ne you negotiate with them, but they'll often just reach out and tell you what they have for that book. And then you get mm. to say whether you're interested or not. Wow. Hmm. So I don't know that I like that. Small, <laughs> well, you. It, the smaller, well, that makes sense because you guys should get a choice. You should mm -hmm. at least have, a, and I know that depending on who the author is. Same with um, the celebrity look from our side and your side. Celebrity authors, I know I've been one of, she told me a hundred voices that were submitted when I did her book. So it, it wow. varies. Well, that's very uncommon. I think it's usually. Lies. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> she said Lies. I hundreds of voices. So it, it varies, but I'm sure I, it's your words, your characters. You should absolutely have author mm -hmm. approval. By the way, if you see us, and this can be something that's edited out, if mm -hmm. you see us start to sweat, this is what, if you've ever seen audiobook narrators talking about that, it's because there mm -hmm. is no air in Oh, the okay. So we might need to move. just, we're well, just going to open the door up just for a second. <laughs> yeah, no judgment. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> <laughs> and now so, with two of us in here, it gets real hot real you fast. You can just leave the door open unless yeah. you have like a dog that's going to come and yell at you. And even then, we'll just edit that part out. I mean... Okay. Well, I, I mean, we're so used to Places like at a table. You know. My kid will probably. I told my kids not to bust <laughs> yeah. in. It might happen. Like <laughs> I already look at this. I'm sweating because I'm drinking, oh, and I've oh had my, my hell. Of I'm all over the place. I mean, <laughs> I'm glistening. You I'm glistening that. everywhere. You deserve yeah. a little sweating. <laughs> uh, yes. Well, I mean, obviously, we you know we get yelled at for the quality of sound in our booth, so that's why we would oh. never. 
We would never I have will... the door open, but if you think it's fine, then you're not getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> you do right. what you want. I'm so sorry. We would love to pay you, but we do not break even on that. <laughs> right. it's, it's for the love. It's for the love. I did not have a booth before COVID, and because I work in studio and would never choose to work in the sweat lodge. <laughs> uh, I had to put it in the hall to, to continue doing books oh, through COVID. Yeah. Because oh, you'll have the oh. you'll hear the hum of the fan or the air conditioner. Yes. So yeah. that's okay. Wow. Yep. I didn't even think you about that till just out. now. Yeah. yeah. That sounds yeah. like uh oh. tank tank top and underpants city to me. Right. <laughs> but, I mean, oh. I just finished a book today that's and I was overdressed. full on in my pajamas. Uh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> tank to- that's overdressed. I've done just underwear and I if I work from home, I get a remote director. And so I always say, if I put my video on by mistake, I'm sorry about your eyes. My iPad also is at I love boob it. height. They just would get full boob. Mm-hmm. So, oh, I love it. Oh, oh, so oh. so All right. Well, thank you for letting us get some air. It was getting oh, a yeah. No, here. please, please do. No. <laughs> Chris, why don't you go? To the I'm next like, I'm sweating. Okay, yes. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm sweating, but I'll. Uh, okay, so here's my question. Now, how did you both get into narration in the first place? How did that all start? Marisa, I bypassed what people normally do, which is indie books, which is wonderful. But I managed randomly to be uh, asked to do a book trailer. Do you remember that was a thing? Mm -hmm. So I did a book trailer for Macmillan in 2011. And then they asked me if I did long form. And that's the audiobook. And I lied and said yes. (laughs) <laughs> good for you Fake like until you make it. Actor. exactly <laughs> and then they gave me the book and I had no idea what it would be and I just sweated my way through it but it, you go into studio and you literally sit down you kind of close that rustles you know all things I didn't know and you start talking at 10 a.m and you take lunch and then you stop talking at 5 p.m and it's Either you straight roll or you punch and roll. So they'll, they'll, you wear headphones and they'll put you back to where you made a mistake. And you'll, st- I didn't know how to do any of that. That's what punch and roll means. Yeah. If you oh, never heard that term. Yeah. No. It means something else to me. <laughs> punch and roll. Something else here in the Midwest. Oh, this is from Thank the you. mean streets. <laughs> I am. <laughs> from the mean streets of the Midwest. <laughs> punch and roll, bitches. Let's go. <laughs> Oh my God, I will never not think that. That's great. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm punch and roll. So straight, ro- straight roll would be you make a mistake, you just keep going. Punch and roll is the editor, uh, the engineer will stop you and will will punch yeah. you mm-hmm. back into the audio where you'll hear kind of a sentence or two before your mistake and then it'll pick up. And straight mm-hmm. roll, someone's marking the script. So there'll be a director or an engineer who marks every time you make a mistake for the editor. So mm-hmm. I went straight into this world of um, historical fiction because having an accent gives mm-hmm. you, mm-hmm. you come to mind. Oh, yes. You know, it's a huge advantage. So producers will, yeah. So Laurie has lots of sex with the ladies. And I <laughs> in the books, in the and books. Al- and also <laughs> reads books. <Whoa. laughs> what did I miss in P-Town? Wait, what? <laughs> I just summarizing <laughs> and I am having babies in Lumos. cellars without the sex, uh, without the sex. <laughs> um, in Nazi Nickers. occupied France with, mm. you know, like, the, yeah, that's wow. very different day uh, days we spend. Yeah. Yes. She doesn't really do romance books. And there was uh, one time where, so very recently she's done, done some sexy stuff and she's like, Oh, mm. it says buttocks. Yes, I can't. Me. I can't say it. Excuse me. <laughs> they, I had a trilogy, and one was completely tame. Two was like a little ooh, and three. I was like, "Holy shit! This comes with a should come with a disclaimer." <laughs> <laughs> so you were roped in. Yeah, by that the word. I had to do it. You had to. You were tricked. <laughs> so then she's like coming home, and she's like. Well, you know, you can't have an orgasm sound like the first orgasm. You have to have a different Very sounding good. orgasm. And I was like, of course. Nice. Thing. I, I commit. I really commit. And I, so I'm usually committing at running from Nazis. <laughs> so, you know, usually I'm like this kind of heavy breathing. And 
Very and different. I literally had to apologize to the engineer. I was <laughs> like, dude, I do actions. And I, it's hard for me to curb that just because this is a different kind of book. So yeah, close your eyes. <laughs> 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 oh god uh, i firmly believe that you hear all of that intensity in your voice so yeah you gotta move yes. see ai I can't do that ai cannot do that no no do you want to listen to true. an uh, no i don't think it's I think so many also oh my god ai doing a sex scene just you like listen to an AI read the least a sexy. erotica novel. I mean, what the hell is that? <laughs> the well, orgasms would sound the same. They, they would sound the same. Wrong. Right. That feels true. great. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Do it again. Ooh. 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 <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> oh. Huh. Uh. I, I have a what question about, that we didn't did talk about. Yeah, we got to oh, yeah, yeah. getting into it. Oh, I um I come from uh, the theater world, and mm -hmm. um as you know, there's two parts for a um girl in theater: the girlfriend or the mother. So yeah. after I kind of aged out of the girlfriend, I was like, uh oh, gotta kill time <laughs> for the mother. <laughs> gotta kill time until my face catches up to my age. Um, no, I was doing a lot of other uh voiceover work, and this was a, a piece of VO work that scared the crap out of me honestly and so i uh, mm. actually avoided it for so long because it's so difficult and really intimidating and uh yeah and then i started working for um bolt strokes and i mm. i am so uh, grateful for them because i kind of started there so sorry to all those authors that i started doing audiobooks in them i'm a lot, a lot better now <laughs> <laughs> So that was, I, I think I, I maybe reviewed one of your earlier ones and I tried to be kind, but it was like, yeah, sure. There, but like, eh, fair enough. Wow. but it was like, and I, but wow. I noticed from like, book That's to book that I was listening to and I didn't, I mean, I, I don't listen to every book that bold stroke. I can't listen to every book that any company puts out, but like, I noticed over time, I was like, oh shit. Oh, she's really good. Yeah, oh, I mean, because the oh thing my God, is, like, it's, it's, it, cause it's, it is a technique. I mean, even though yeah, that mm -hmm. I had been acting for 20 years, like it's, it's a very different technique to act to this thing mm -hmm. and to create the world of however many characters are, are in the book. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all you. It, no it yeah. <laughs> so yes, I started in 2015, I think it's. Oh, uh, so you're, so it's still kind of new wish um i guess so well, i still i'm I mean, still stuck like pre pre covid i'm still in 2019 i i feel like i can't yes. get past that so i'm like it's 2023 what what has happened I know. so 2015 that's <clears throat> that's yeah but i also wasn't doing them full time in any capacity mm. until very recently mm. yeah that's a and now we're job. here now great i think i think it is i mean i think i, I think that's even harder because like when you're acting, you have other people on set that you can feed off of, I think. Mm -hmm. And so, that's and then, it, yeah. And then by yourself, I mean, that, yeah, that's but super hard. to shape the intention behind all of the narrative as well as the dialogue. The dialogue right. can be easier, but you, I, for listeners, I binge listened to five hours of your podcast today. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> oh, okay, I have a couple of things to bring up. Uh oh. Uh, the one hmm. that's on topic is that you talk about words. Yes, and words. I love yes. them. Right? Yes, I it's, love them. But I do fewer books than other people because I think there's a, the, the author has done everything for a reason. Every word has intention. So I think everything needs shaping with intention. So I like the prep time, and they don't give us very much of this, and they really should give us text sooner because that's a big job. It's a big mm -hmm. job to shape sometimes 600 pages with intention wow yeah so it's we yeah. are performing 600 pages and you don't really get do-overs so you really have to take the time to figure out exactly mm. what the author is sharing so that you can be the conduit for that so do they send you the book and then you have like two days to read it and then like 10 days to record or how does that work I mean, uh, that could happen. That could Absolutely. Happen. Wow. Sometimes longer. Uh, it depends a lot on whether, when they're getting the final from, from the um, editors. But okay. it can be, I've had six, 36 hours to do a, to prep a book. 
Oh my God. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, and the other thing is, file books. you're yeah. also, even if you got it, let's say three weeks before you're about to record it, you have two mm. other books before you even do in that book. <laughs> so, wow. you know, if you, yeah. So wow. it's like, that's, um, uh, yeah, that's so the, sorry. That's you didn't like that guy's part. voice that was on page 57, but I yeah. had, you know, four minutes to choose a voice for him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he didn't sound like the other 19 people in, <laughs> in that scene. So, you know what I mean? It's like, right. That's so what why does prep we a little look bit like? Think, uh, whew, good luck, AI. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. yeah, exactly. Well, well and I, I do a lot of accents. I, most yeah. of my books are European set, so I have tons mm -hmm. of accents to figure out ahead of time. So that's why I need more prep time. And I yeah. try to insist wow. on pushing my dates as much as possible so that I get as much time with the book as I can. Well, I'm certainly going to do better. Back. I'm going to do better on my notes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my notes <laughs> are so that's, like, that's, yeah, that's, she's... I don't, I don't know if this isn't anything. I never get notes. What? No, no producer well, has ever given me notes. I have, so I, uh, that's bad. I mean, like, I, I think I only do like a pay, like, like a ha like a paragraph, like she's 28. She sounds fun and flirty. And this person is kind of husky, has a huskier voice or a raspier voice. And I don't, but I let them go with it. I always say, just have fun with this character. This character yeah. is just like, a secondary character and she's a lot of fun she brings a lot of purpose to the story and i always let my narrators just go with it i mean the only thing that they have to do is pronounce the name right and that's it everything right. else yeah. it's all it's all you 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 make it work you do whatever well, you think I'm, is is that's possible. very nice of you because often it's important that you know you've got a room full of people and you have to put them all in slightly different places so when everyone is gravelly and deep, yeah. like, there are yeah. three guys in the room and they're all gravelly and deep. <laughs> so yeah. one is getting a list. <laughs> one's getting a list. Exactly. I mean, that's the thing. Oh, he's you know? French. <laughs> yeah, it's always French. Exactly. And again, historical fiction, I'll have a boardroom of 18th century men and I'm like, okay, how long is their moustache? And how much does it affect the way that they talk? Oh, yeah. Because there's nothing else to do. Right. So, socio, you know, economically all the same, because no one else got a job back then. So then you start reaching for like length of beard and yeah. how that affects. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's very cool. I'm going to have to write men in my books now with long yes. beards. And so, <laughs> like, never. <laughs> I don't think that'll fly. <laughs> Yes, your <laughs> lesbian reader audience would love to read about men with long beards. <laughs> men? What? Uh, what? what? There's oh, a man. What? That what? often Do happens with men? me, and I'm like, oh, there's a man in this book. <laughs> <laughs> How many yeah, scenes man. does he have? <laughs> oh. I have seen occasionally complaints on Goodreads of like a lesbian book where there's a side character who's a man that's like fairly prominent maybe it's a brother maybe it's a what and it's like i don't want to read about men and i'm like <laughs> uh, okay yeah that's tough that is, yeah, yeah. That is tough that yes is tough. exactly <laughs> i think i've only had like one man male a uh, side character mateo from always he he's mm. the he's my Italian sidekick, and mm. um, that I think he's the only one I've written. Because huh. again, you know, people are like, we don't want to read about we men in the books, man. right? Even the really colorful gay best friend dude, right? I can't remember. I don't know that probably he was, more acceptable, he was right? Mm -hmm. Right? No, I don't <laughs> think probably... Matteo was. <laughs> no, a little bro energy is good. Yeah, variation. Oh yeah, throw a little himbo in the mix. <laughs> I got a lot of men. I don't, well, but yes, that's very true. Well, that's yeah. If you're doing books about war all the time, right? A lot of men in war. There would be men war. in war. Men. Men, men in war. <laughs> Way fewer well then, like none. so rolling off of that authenticity, you know, in casting is something that comes up all the time, um, especially in this decade where people calling for gay people to play gay roles, trans people to play trans roles and the like. Um, do you think that that matters in audiobooks? I do. Absolutely. Ooh, I do. I'm okay. actually curious to hear what you guys think as consumers, because we, we have thoughts more full but yeah, yes we were we were curious as to i have so thoughts. many audiobooks in my uh my library so i i, no, I can't answer that 
um, how do I feel right, about so it? I feel TV, like uh, TV, film. Do you, does like it make film? A to you when you find out that some of those favorite couples you have are played by uh, lesbians or by women or anyone who's queer? Um, I think it's important to the queer environment, uh, just our community. I think it's important. Has it bothered me in the past? It depends on how long ago it was. I feel mm-hmm. if there are some genuine, because I mean, acting is acting. It That's yes. what it is. That's, that's the, that's the job you're acting. You're not really a, a 19 or 1800s French, you know, yeah. congressman or whatever. <laughs> like it, it, I, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, I, yes. I, I just, I feel like it's an acting job. I think it's important though for for trans people to to play trans roles. Um, yes, and uh, I think that's important. I feel like I'm not offended if there's a lesbian that isn't a lesbian. I, mm-hmm. I feel like um, like if if this person is quote unquote straight, what's straight? You know, I mean, there, I, I that's I, I want to see it more, but at the same time, I'm not super offended if that person isn't 100 percent queer. It's mm-hmm. one of those things. So yeah. I know Tara has yeah. thoughts and I might get in trouble. <laughs> no, I, 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 you're not in trouble with me. I think for okay. me where I have a problem with it is when it feels like a particular celebrity was chosen for marketing purposes. Oh yeah. Almost. Oh yeah. Where, it, sure. where it's almost like a stunt casting mm-hmm. yeah. choice or something mm-hmm. like that. It's like, we want to get butts and seats. So we're going to like, if they were to do say, um to Wong Fu again and you pick like a Patrick Swayze when like do we have I mean well he's dead but like you know do do we have to do we have to do that but it's tough because it also goes kind of the other way I also don't want to leave an opening for the homophobes to say well you can't have queer people playing straight characters like Mm -hmm. I don't want that to turn into a mm-hmm. thing especially right now where there's such backlash against our community mm-hmm. um, I do and have it's... a feeling about that yeah. I think that the difference there is that a lot of queer people are forced to work walk through the world experiencing it the way that heterosexual people do so mm-hmm. they can speak to that experience to a degree in a way that straight people cannot speak to the experience of being treated in a marginalized way as a queer person would so mm-hmm. the ex- the the imagination it requires is much less for us because we know how we're treated when people think we're straight. Mm-hmm. And then when we come out, we see how that changes, but it's not true the other way around. We yes. do know what they right, do right. know what the straight experience mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. because it's it, an, an assumption. Sorry, baby. I think mm-hmm. it's, it's a really complex topic and it's one that I think whenever we have it amongst a group of actors, I think it gets, People have very clear ideas about it, I think. I've never murdered anyone. Does that mean I can't play a murderer? Yeah, exactly. exactly. But when you, we were just talking about it this morning, like when you just said like acting is acting, like you're an actor, act Mm -hmm. the part. But when you think about the fact, like if you really break down the methodology of acting, I mean, at its core, it's, it's listening and reacting. And if you think about reacting being instinctual, I like to think of myself as a very instinctual actor. When someone says something, it is going to hit me through all Mm -hmm. of my experience. Mm -hmm. And so my choices, my actions are going to be colored by that experience. So yes, can straight people play gay roles? Yes. Can gay people play straight roles? Yes. Have I been offered to audition for trans stuff? Yes, I have. Can I play it? Yes. Doesn't mean that I should. Yeah. Right. And I I said, absolutely not. Thank you very Mm -hmm. much. I am not auditioning for that. That should go to a trans actor. And what is, Mm -hmm. what I find very interesting is it, now this was like 10 years ago, is they cast a straight woman. And my thought process behind that was, as a as a gay woman and as a minority, I am super aware of how I walk through the world, like you said, mm-hmm. and being that minority. And I, I wonder if that was even a thought in that person's head. It was like to yeah, that person, no. it was like, oh, that's a part. Mm-mm. Right. Yeah. I don't know that, obviously, but like we, it's like you think about it more so because of who mm-hmm. we are, you mm-hmm. know? 
I think yeah. the other lens I would put on it, because there's actually something very analogous to actually writing books too, because there's also often right. the question of, should authors be writing out of their experience? And we see this mostly when it comes to race. Should yes, white authors be writing is. black characters? Yeah. Should they be writing, you know, characters of other ethnicities? And of course, there's always going to be the people that are like, fuck you, I'll write whatever I want. And it's like, well, yeah, you can absolutely write whatever you want. Go for it. But I think what it really comes down to as a problem, and this can be true for acting as well, is, you know, some publishers will only have one quote unquote black book coming out in a quarter. And so if you give that to a white author, just because they're writing about black characters mm -hmm. and they can't write about the black experience from any kind of knowledge or lived, lived yeah. experience. And so I think that's where I tend to have the biggest problem with it, especially at this time right now, if we're talking about LGBTQ people where like trans people are under attack, mm -hmm. don't just stick a dude in a wig and then he's your trans woman right character when there are trans actors who right. would mm -hmm. like to get work mm -hmm. absolutely yep yeah. yeah the only last thing i would say about it is that also it needs to be done well so when straight right. people play gay characters well i still celebrate that because a yes. better performance is transporting mm -hmm. so we all get a sense of the experience of that character to have someone who can more authentically play that but doesn't do it well is not a substitute. So I think it's all just, you know, uh, trying to make sure that all the authentic voices get their opportunities, but that they're still held to a creative standard. standard. Right. I think like what, what Lori was saying, you know, 15 years ago or whatever we had, like what comes to my mind and I never really watched this show was How I Met Your Mother. Mm -hmm. So you had, and I, 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 Neil Patrick Harris, I mean, he played like this, this womanizer, you know, and I don't think, I think everybody knew that he would, I think at that time, everybody thought he was straight. Yeah. Or, I'm so. sorry. Yeah. yeah. So I thought he, they, yeah. they thought he was straight before he actually came out or before he was outed. Mm -hmm. I really don't know his history, but I think that's happened a lot when we were like, like really growing up and watching television. It's if there was a gay person, it was play, it could be played by a straight person. And that just kind of was the way that that tv and movies were at the time i think yeah. obviously mm -hmm. we're more socially aware of it um like i said i i truly believe um you know if the acting there's great i've watched a lot of tv over covid and there's been a lot of yeah. horrible acting it's like i'm always like i can do better than that <laughs> so i mean and it's always but how do you really feel <laughs> so so here's the deal so I'm, I'm always like i can always tell when it's a covid movie like was this made in 2021 or 2022 <laughs> because the acting is shit and it's like you still have to act you still have to you know do the job and but i you know i i, I support my queer community and i want and, and i want them to to get the jobs too but i think you know i think people are being more aware of the situation you know a lot of directors right. and and a lot of uh just casting people are aware of the situation and they are doing better. At least I'm hoping that they are. I've seen changes in the last year since COVID kind of yeah. like, but I, I definitely have seen changes and I'm all for it for sure. I mean, certainly in the casting breakdowns, they have a uh, more inclusive language. Um, right. They're searching. No. Um, that's, that's definitely happened, but also they can't come out and ask you. I mean, they can say, right. They yeah. can say to the agent, we are looking to cast this as blah, 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 blah. But they cannot, when you go into audition, they cannot ask you if you are oh, gay. Yeah. They just legally can't ask you that. And That's a great point. And audiobooks have changed yeah. a ton. Audiobooks have made much more of a concerted effort to cast authentic voices. You see them reaching out for specific ethnicities, everything. Uh, yeah. Uh, and sexualities. And they can't ask, but they ask that you make known how you identify so that they can reach out to you appropriately. I mean, if you go to my oh, Instagram, like... you can figure it out real fast. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So if you go to my Instagram, you can figure it out real fast. Well, not There's everyone. my wedding. Oh, There's my wedding. Wasn't yeah. it great? It was. <laughs> I'm sure my invitation got lost in the mail. I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. It's okay. I'm not hurt or anything. Oh, oh did we tell you about how Chris tried to pick up my lady when we met? 
That's what no, I did. But I did. She she about knew. that. I she think we should I talk about that. Kansas City. <laughs> you know, I was all I was on board. Let's go. But I was turned <laughs> down. Damn, I was shot down. <laughs> well, oh. I heard that at Women's Week there was maybe a little bit of bonding over a little bit of edible cannabis uh, <laughs> between the three of you because I wasn't there. Like, uh, can you? Is uh, anybody able to tell a story about Chris Bryant, uh, uh, edible cannabis the pusher? pusher? <laughs> <laughs> the pusher. Apparently, this is not the first time. <laughs> So, I think there was also maybe some shots that also there were a, there was a lot of alcohol during oh, that time. I had a great for time. sure. That was I abandoned everybody because I had so much fun with the both of you. I mean, yes. seriously, I was like, let's. And then I tried to hone in on your dinner too, because I was high and drunk. And let's go eat. And you're like, <laughs> yeah, oh, we're, we're like, like a uh, date. <laughs> we have like a just a reservation for two. <laughs> There's room. Otherwise, There's room at the table. You would have been so welcome. Um, so yes. <laughs> You've supplied us with something, and we had a misunderstanding because I popped it right in my mouth, and you were not planning on doing that, but because no. I did, she did. <laughs> no, I, 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 took I had one. nothing to do with that peer pressure I, right there. That's not me. <laughs> I took it because I have massive anxiety in the car, so I took it and and was like, "Yes, I will take that." And I was like, "I'm gonna have it on a ride back." And she looks around at me, and I'm and she just like <laughs> she put it in her oh. mouth. I was like, "Well, oh, here we go." <laughs> I asked for it for the car. Oh, it's a bit late now, isn't it? Yeah, so that was a good time. A half, we had half one of these things. We wondered later in the evening how Chris Bryant had survived her evening. <laughs> well, we had only had a half, and she found it like a tunnel on the way back to the Airbnb. <laughs> Milligrams was this edible? I don't know. I don't know. Let me tell you my favorite thing. We had never, it's not a big part of my day to day. So we had never got high together. What I didn't know until that night, thanks to Chris, <laughs> is that Laurie, who's got a baseline of sarcasm, it's just how she exists, <laughs> becomes really Lovey. earnest. Mm. Oh, yeah. No, she really tackles every question. <laughs> yeah. So I would ask something just in passing, and she'd be like, oh, I don't know. And then come up with like seven possible answers. I, mean, <laughs> really I love it. Yeah. yeah. My, pers my, my personality completely changed. So I don't know what wow. Chris Bryant gave us. <laughs> Whatever it was, I bought it legally in P Town. Yes, That's all exactly. It did. I did. Yes, that yes, is why we partook. And yes, it was great. It was safe. I, I had and your backs. I mean, and you those did. places are really, I mean, they're re they were really helpful. So clean. Oh, the dispensaries? <laughs> yes, the dispensaries. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yes. It was really nice. Because, of course, mm -hmm. then we went into one the next day. Yes. yes. Obviously. <laughs> we you have to. <laughs> it was to. funny. They totally ditched me because they're like, oh, we're leaving. Goodbye. And then the next morning I get up and I'm I'm walking along commercial and they're sitting there eating breakfast. <laughs> I thought you guys were oh, no. <laughs> we, we, had <laughs> but we had breakfast first. I was like, it's two in the afternoon. I thought you <laughs> le were leaving at like eight. Like, I am don't worse. worry about it. Chris sat down and had breakfast with us. I did. The <laughs> so, like, our listeners, like, don't feel you. bad for Chris. <laughs> also, we sat there having breakfast saying, where's our best friend, Chris? We did. See, and so, and then I just showed up. I magically showed up and I you grabbed did, a chair yeah. from somebody else and you I just sat down. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it was, but here, that's the beauty of P Town is like, you can kind of uh, crash anybody's little, little party and, and nobody cares. Like, it's, it's such a loving, Amazing. fun experience. Yeah. Are you going to, are you been. going again? Are, are we, we going to do this do. sometime soon? I go every year. Do you really? I do. I really do. Okay. Well, <laughs> no, we do. We definitely do want to go again. I don't, think it's possible this year but yes absolutely we want to go again yeah we sure. had a we had a great time it really uh that there's just something about just walking i you know we live in new york city and there's mm -hmm. as it is one of the meccas for uh gay people mm -hmm. it all it also there's just also a lot of people and right. so I always, I also, as I walk around with a baseline of sarcasm, I also walk around with a baseline of fear often. Mm -hmm. So the fact mm -hmm. of walking around Provincetown with that many queer ladies, there was, mm -hmm. it was an experience that I have never had before. And I really, 
it, it warmed my heart. It really yeah. did. It's, it's yeah. a beautiful experience. It really is. You feel you, like you said, you're, you feel very safe. Like, yeah. and it's, I, I remember one night there was a, a writer who was like, Hey, can I walk you home? Because apparently I was stumbling, but I didn't think that I was. <laughs> And so um, oh, it was really sweet. She walked me that. home and like the next day she's like, Hey, how are you doing? I'm like, what? Who are you? And she, she really, had, so everybody oh. helps everybody. And yeah. it's just, it's such a, everybody knows everybody. Like, like I went into the Mayflower and Chris and Diana were sitting there and I was like table for one. They're like, no, come over and join us. And so it was just, it's just such a welcoming place. So that's yeah. why I kind of honed in on your breakfast because that's kind of what we do in P-Town. You and <laughs> so the reason, the reason we that's want on to- me wanted to go in the first place was because I with my film had gone on an Olivia cruise and there was a film festival so that's what I was doing there but I watched a documentary uh clam bake about the origins of women's week oh and and I also the experience of being on a gay cruise was amazing I don't want to be on a ship for anything right I was like with 2,000 lesbians it was a very different experience (laughs) (laughs) and an appropriate way but like an inspiring way yeah yeah that's awesome yeah and that's how I feel how it is there because they have like everything it's like you know so a lot of it like there's one side that's all like books and uh readings and stuff like that and then the, the other side they have like concerts and they have you know musicians that come in and comedians that come in and it's yeah. just, it's such a good experience. There's nothing yeah. bad that happens in Pichon ever, knock on wood. But it's yeah. just, <laughs> yes. fuck, knock on wood. Um, but I truly, I, sharks. I, yes, That's it. And there's sharks maybe, but who goes in the water? I oh. mean, not going in the water in October anyway. No, I will say that one time I was on the beach, it was late at night. I was on the beach and there was a fox there. So they do have foxes oh. on the beaches. Oh, yeah. I don't right. fox. <laughs> I I'm, yeah. I'm not gonna even touch that one. Be nice. No, I love animals. They're, married. They're married. They're married. They're <laughs> married. Let it go. Let it go. Speaking of married, that happened recently, and you had a yes. destination wedding. True. Do you have any tips? Like, what was it like planning that? Also, you're like working full time. You're doing all the things. So, what was it like planning? a wedding a destination wedding and do you have any tips for people yeah the main one being so it was her idea to have a destination wedding and mm. honestly we were uh, people were going to have to fly anyway because her family is uh overseas um so we just would made everyone fly then which feels fair but also if her family was going to come over and honestly she gets mad when i say this but it's probably the only time my family is going to spend any time with her family in any extended kind of way probably so we wanted them to get to know each other because we're I'm going to be speaking about these people and I I want you know you want them to know who they are so we had planned so our our wedding was in Aruba so we had a bunch of different events before the actual day of the wedding and by the time the wedding came it normally you go to a wedding you don't you know like maybe a couple of people there Mm -hmm. But it was it it was such a sense of community by that point that it really it really was magical. So I would just say if you can <laughs> bring everybody to an <laughs> island and, cap- <laughs> and capture them for a couple of days, because um, by the end of it, everyone was exchanging numbers and oh, um, yeah, it really yeah that was the that best was part about it. Honestly, yeah. The, the prolongedness of it so you could all just really spend time with your guests because otherwise I don't think you see them why do I think I'm going to write this story why do I think I'm going to write your story now <gasps> do it well, right? should. the real answer is we wanted to spend four days with Chris but her invitation never arrived right. so, I know I'm so sad gonna, I'm waiting for it we're going to have to do a Vavre renewal we'll have to do you. the one year anniversary I'm there I like to pull up a chair okay. it's all good yeah but it's that was the reason so yeah. we could really spend time with with people and then and then with each other yeah yeah that's and my, my one very specific tip is is when you're you're looking for a place and you're wondering um is this place going to be uh friendly to queer people mm-hmm. go to their social media go to their social media um mm. our, our venue had pictures of two men two women getting married and we were like and thank you 
Also, another good tip, um, when you find their social media, go to their tagged photos and then stalk the bride. <laughs> no, don't stalk them. <laughs> I, I wrote to uh, a couple oh, of different cool. brides who, by the way, people want to talk good about idea. their weddings. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I asked very specific questions and said, I'm thinking about having my wedding here. How did you feel about your wedding? And I, uh, so many people wrote me back and were really helpful. Mm -hmm. So yes, that, that would be my big tip in terms of picking a venue. That is such a good tip. It really is. I never yeah. thought I would never. I didn't no. think of it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> also, it was a private island. So there was nobody walking past going, oh, look at In this. a Speedo. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. Flexing. Yeah. 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 So I just. Priority. Photo yeah. bomb. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want somebody going, look, two girls getting married. I just, kiss, mm -hmm. kiss, kiss. I, yeah, exactly. I just was like, I can't. That's the I sidekick man character. You <laughs> right. <laughs> Leave him out of your adaptation. If I, and then if, you, if I do the book, that's what he's going to sound like. <laughs> oh. Oh. So I guess I guess we have like maybe one time for one more question. So so my question is, what audiobooks would you recommend to our listeners? Ooh, maybe oh. of your own, maybe of somebody else's. Both. Let's oh. do both. Oh, that's such a good question. Yes. I'm, I'll let you take it. Um. I did a multicast version of Dykes to Watch Out For um, mm. by Allison, the graphic novel by Allison Bechtel that mm -hmm. she wrote for 25 years. They did 10 episodes of it. And we, it was such an interesting process. Everyone was in their own space mm -hmm. <laughs> and in various different states, um, also possibly countries at uh, one point. And yeah, it was directed by Lee uh, Silverman, who is a theater director. Jane Lynch plays the narrator. And it's really, I, I love it so much. They have an episode where they go to the Pride Parade and they take footage from this, the specific year where I guess there was the AIDS quilt and everything. And they mm. take real footage mm. of speeches and whatnot and chants and it's interspersed with the the scenes of the character. And it, that episode is my favorite. It just comes to life. It's really, it's really great. So it's a, diff, you know, it's a different type of audiobook. Obviously it's a multicast. It's just um, mostly dialogue. Sounds really mostly special. Queer, mostly yeah. queer women. I'm sorry? Mostly queer women uh yes cast. mostly queer women yes mm -hmm. yeah i feel like i have so many questions about how you adapt a graphic novel to an audiobook <laughs> but also i understand that you did not do the <laughs> adaptation yourself so that, that would have be been fair. um that would have been madeline george uh who worked with allison bechtel um but yes uh take a take a listen to it it's great it is a funny <laughs> question though you take the most visual medium and make it the most <laughs> Yes. Right. Take all the visuals <laughs> out of it. Yeah. Right. Out of the visual <laughs> medium. Because so much of the character Words. Oh, so much of the characterization happens in the, the actual the drawing. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. it's basically like we're gonna yank all that out. Hey actors, you're gonna do the thing that all the art had to do. Yeah, what was yeah. that like for you, Lori? Um, I mean, it was a blast. I played three different characters. So that I, I you know, what, and three completely different characters, a bubbly 20 year old, a kind of sexy divorcee and a, and a, um, a, a softball coach. So that was just a blast, but it's just, it, it, I loved it, loved it, loved it. Cause you're actually working off another actor yeah <laughs> in real time and so That's you know rare. yeah oh, in, in, yeah. in real time exactly i didn't just record my lines in a vacuum um with the director so it that was very special yeah it was great that's cool i actually have propping up my laptop because this is not the most professional <laughs> Set up. <laughs> yes, there it is. I have the book <laughs> propping up my laptop. Yay. And I was, I was listening today to yeah, how much it. you enjoyed Fun Home. <gasps> yes. Oh. I yeah, it's loved Fun Home. That was, yeah. it was so hard to put down. And it was also like, I had so many complicated feelings reading it because the dad is such a complicated yeah. guy and possibly kind of criminal with his, right. some of his 
like that was probably sexual uh, sorry statutory rape in some cases and i thought she did such a great job of not absolving him of any of it Mm -hmm. and instead as readers you have to just sit with the discomfort yeah yeah did you see it on uh did you see the musical i live in calgary canada (laughs) (laughs) they have the stampede (laughs) you know what there were tours yeah that's true there were the fun one went on tour but i don't i uh, i know it had a u.s tour yeah yeah i I don't don't think it came to to calgary but maybe during one of our prides which is next month so i don't know i can take a look and see what's happening i need to see what's happening for calgary pride anyway so Mm. yeah i love calgary there's some beautiful do you (gasps) look at that a lover of calgary (laughs) (laughs) besides tara (laughs) yes i spent Mm. a lot of time in alberta because oh, that's cool. Ex. <gasps> so it's oh. true. <laughs> All right. Well, if the two of you ever come this way, well, let me know. <laughs> we will we'll do. We'll crush your breakfast. <laughs> yes, please do. Yes. <laughs> On the way, we're going to stop at, uh, at Chris's house, post a audiobook through the mailbox, and then lock the door from the outside. <laughs> she has to listen to it. She can't go anywhere. Inside. Like unplug the TV, you know, yeah. take yeah. my phone. I didn't say do all of that. Okay. And then you'll come to my house for breakfast and then I will know how many milligrams of weed are in the edibles <laughs> that I give to you. <laughs> I'm just like, this looks safe here. It was. Yeah, it was we had a great time. Sure. <laughs> oh. it's all right, it's self. Yeah, what Whenever about take your... something from Chris again? <laughs> I would say always take something from <laughs> thank you thank you I, see now i have one more thing to say based on my pre-listening to so much of oh. your great oh, podcast okay is that if i was on alone which i haven't ever oh. watched oh. yeah the show mm-hmm. you've been watching mm-hmm. alone mm-hmm. i would definitely build the best cabin ever and then just die see <laughs> that's what happens that's I what happens with that. yeah but you're really like my job here is done yes because i love home renovation she I, she renovated our entire renovated apartment it. herself. And I would, as long as Literally. my cabin was oh. perfect, I would then waste away to nothing in it with such pride. But then you might as well build a amazing. coffin. That would, it would be the best oh, coffin God. you ever saw. <laughs> also, it would be white. With a dovetail. Yeah. The dovetail. You'd have energy right. left to forage if you just I, built that. If I just built my own coffin. <laughs> I will build the best coffin ever. That's and how then- they live. <laughs> That's how they survive on alone. Like that. That's right. Um, <laughs> yeah. So just background, Chris Chris was complaining that people use all their energy resources in building the cabin and then they don't have enough ah, to hunt for food. Okay. And then well, they have to tap out. It's awful. It's like and then you get the people who like spend all their time eating fish. And they don't have a shelter and they freeze. So then they tap out because they're so cold or they have frostbite or they lose like body parts. It's just like, find the happy medium. You would think after 11 seasons, you know, somebody would figure that out. Like, okay, maybe we should do make maybe a decent shelter and then maybe not like eat so much fish. I mean, there's, there's, I didn't know there was 11 seasons of it. There's something it's like nine or 11. It's, it's up there. And and I just, I like it because it's just the person and the camera and that's it. There's no film mm. crew. It's not like Survivor. They have like, like five uh, different cameras and then they, they have a satellite phone when they tap out. Like I broke my leg. Come get me. Wow. Yeah. I would have so, been like, I built the perfect cabin. <laughs> <laughs> Send in the next guy. They can stay here. <laughs> And, yeah, uh, and I'm out. you're welcome <laughs> but here's the cool thing is they actually take it apart like when the person taps out they take it all apart so that they have no un- there's right there's no to foot, keep right? it right yeah. yeah all right so that that part's kind of so i kind of like it for that aspect you know it's not like commercialized it's just it's just quote unquote man and nature you know right. I, I really want a woman to win like a woman lasted a really long time but they have pulled her because she lost too much weight and I'm like, oh, I would be perfect for this show because, <laughs> like, I could lose like 40 pounds in a month. This is fantastic. <laughs> Why am I not on this show? <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, you should apply between the between us all. We'll win it. Mm-hmm. We could. I don't want to. You do can that. come around to my cabin with the food. Thank that you. you. Right. I can. I can get you the berries <laughs> and the cannabis. I'm sure I'd find something. <laughs> 
Wait, wait, wait what's fine. this? Trust I can smoke me. this. <laughs> yeah. I know you I've get. seen this plant before. <laughs> oh, that's what's true. your recommendation, Morris. baby? Yes. That's our recommendation. Oh, I see. We have a we have a friend who is a narrator, a wonderful narrator and a writer. Her name is Gabra Zachman. And she wrote something after COVID. She wrote a, a short audiobook called My COVID Romance. Mm. And it's hilarious and beautiful and just brilliantly acted and uh written. So if you have that's just a short one. That's just a couple of hours. My COVID romance. Have, okay. You have All right. hours are if you have a short drive, Chris Bryan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> to work, yes. I would thoroughly <laughs> recommend that one. Yeah, it's got a lot of queer representation. Oh, good. In, uh, as well. She's yeah. she's very good at she lives in Queens and she likes to represent it in its entirety. Yeah. That sounds wonderful. I think that is all for this episode. Thank you both so much, Marisa and Lori, for joining us. This has been an absolute delight. Thanks oh, for having had the best us. Time. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for letting us crash your podcast. <laughs> we'll see you next week. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> invitations in the mail. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, your invitations in the mail. Now I can say it. <laughs> for we'll everyone <laughs> refresh 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 on the zoom link oh my god <laughs> uh for everyone who's been listening if you've listened this far thank you also for joining us if you've enjoyed the show please make sure you subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts you get notified when we release an episode if you have a friend that you think would like the show please tell them about it send them this episode what a great place to start and if you want to support us we have links in our show notes to our coffee our newsletter and some other stuff or if you want to connect with us on your favorite, 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 favorite <laughs> social media <laughs> sites, we have links in the show notes for that as well. Or you can just search for Queerly Recommended on Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, TikTok, and Twitter, or email us at podcast at queerlyrecommended.com. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. 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 Yeah. Hey everyone, welcome to Queerly Recommended, the podcast where we usually recommend queer films, books, TV shows, and more. And I'm, I'm Tara. Oh shit! I forgot to Son say who bitch. I was because well, I didn't I move was my own like, line. I was smoo- I, okay. Take we two. have like a curse we- of recording on Mondays too because we're both ridiculous at the end of the first day back for the week. I just need okay, to grab my sorry, fucking line introducing myself. I saw that you called it Murs, the M- Monday something something. I w- it had a title. Monday something on one of your it's in the podcast blurb I think you're right Right. I forgot about that (laughs) I was ready Um, for it yeah oh my god okay so research you you took it very seriously I'm very (laughs) very impressed (laughs) yeah okay we're gonna do that again I'm gonna gonna shut up uh I'm just gonna do that part (laughs) just type that part okay that's gonna be better